you get ready to go to hell unless you straighten up. So that's when I got honest with him because I sure enough didn't want to go to hell. He said, now you ain't been honest with me, straighten up, tell me. I said, well, Father, if you don't get off your throne and help me. So I put him on his promise. Well, if you don't get off your throne and help me with my, my sexual problems, with my addiction problems, then I'm going to keep on doing them. Then he said, now you're not in denial no more. Because I said, I love him. I love it. So if you don't help me, I ain't going to stop. That's when he said, now since you're honest with me and you're honest with yourself, I get off the throne and help you. And that's how my deliverance came. By me telling him, without your help, I can't do it. And I will continue to do it until you, by your word and your promises, help me. Now, have I fallen from time to time? Yes. Yes, I have. Amen? And anybody that tells you that they haven't, I, I find it kind of hard to believe. Deliverance is an ongoing process until Jesus comes to get us. And the way that we keep our deliverance, and I'm getting ready to show you now, how many of you want to know how to stay delivered? Amen. Can, I'm going to prove it to you right now by the word of God, because I ask God, how do I stay delivered? Because I'm tired of me listening to people saying, I asked God to take the taste out of my mouth, and he did. Three months later, they lied. The taste was back. I asked God to deliver me from this, and he did. You know, we testified in church. You know, and you know, homeless folk and drug addicts and people like that, people in prison, they can see right through that stuff. They see right through you. We come up there, all that glory of God is given, they see right through your lie. They want somebody they can approach who been like where they've been. Amen? Amen. So, I go here to, uh, for 2 Corinthians 2 7 says this. This blew my mind. God took me here like this. He says, 2 Corinthians 2 7. So that contrary wise, you ought to rather forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. And I said, who is he talking about? So I went to my Jameson Foster and Brown, and he was talking about the guy in 1 Corinthians 5 who had had sex with his father's wife. And you remember when the Paul said, turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh? He kicked him out of the church because we don't want that spirit to permeate through the church. So what had happened was, the guy got his life together, right? He stopped sinning with his father's wife and wanted to come back in the church, and they wouldn't let him back in. You know, Paul said, now go back, forgive him, unless he fall into depression. Forgive him. Now watch this. And they wouldn't. They wouldn't even let him back in the door. Now first they let him have that sin, until Paul wrote the letter and said, y'all let this man commit this sin, knowing about it, y'all need to put him out. Now he's got his life together, they won't let him back in. Now that make any sense? Amen. So, my favorite scripture here was this. When I looked at 2 Corinthians 1, verse 9 and 10, now watch this. It says that we have the descendants of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and do deliver, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ain't that wonderful? I walked through those scriptures and did this, and followed those scriptures. Now watch this, watch this. Now here's true deliverance, you ready? Because that scripture didn't work for me. 